Hello to all of our blessed families and members throughout America. I'm Reverend Michael Jenkins, President of the Family Federation. On behalf of our Continental Director, Dr. Young, we bring you greetings and love from our true parents. We just returned from Hawaii and had a tremendous experience of seeing the Elder Son Nation once again fulfill its responsibility to really lift up uh, unity of all faith traditions and really bring uh, honor to our true parents as they are really working to unify all of the nations of the Pacific Ocean and connect them with Hawaii and America to bring a unity of all nations together with the Elder Sun Nation to bring peace. The ultimate objective is to unify North and South Korea so that we can bring the peaceful unification of Korea. The other peace objective that Father always focuses on and points to is the Middle East Peace Initiative of the Universal Peace Federation of which America plays a pivotal role. I want to thank all of our blessed families for the tremendous support you've given our movement to send ambassadors for peace to the Middle East and also the way I saw the development in Hawaii. I want to thank our Kona family and all of the brothers and sisters and leaders who are there, especially Reverend Ernie Ho, our state leader, Reverend Chuck Fruman, our, our pastor there, all the elders of the community, Mr. Matsuzaki and uh, also Mr. Joe Tully, tremendous coming together of the community there for Hawaii to really fulfill its responsibility representing America. Father called 120 leaders from the pro-North Korean uh, Koreans living in Japan and 120 from the pro-South Koreans uh, who live in Japan. They've been in the Japan for many decades since the time that Japan ruled over Korea. Many of them are strongly affiliated with the North uh, because that's their homeland. Uh, there's been a fierce conflict between those two groups, just as there has been an incredible conflict since the end of the Korean uh, conflict in 1953 on to today. Actually, the war has never really finished. There's been this incredible tension. Father's work in Hawaii was targeting two things. One was to win the hearts of the local Hawaiian people and as well as the the citizens of the state of Hawaii who are great Americans to come together and embrace the peace ideal as the Elder Sun Nation and also to see the pro-North Korean and the pro-South Korean people come into that environment in America, see the reconciliation of all races and all peoples and then also to really pledge to work together with Father to bring peace in North and South Korea and a peaceful unification to make one Korea, one fatherland. Father achieved incredible results there. One thing that was very special is uh, Pastor Kahu Norman, who is uh, together with his wife are the direct descendants of King Kamehameha, actually honored true parents in the banquet celebration, which was not only bringing the North and South, pro North and South Koreans together, but also bringing the community of Hawaii together. The pastors really responded. Tremendous foundation of our ambassadors for peace there and also the ACLC. It's amazing the foundation of, of support that true parents have in every country of the 190 countries. But also we saw that same thing in Hawaii. It was amazing. That support is real and it's deep. One of the things that caused many of these pastors and the direct descendants of King Kamehameha to fully embrace and support true parents was that they had gone to Israel with us. When they go to Israel, when they go to the Palestinian territories and on to Jordan, they're overwhelmed with the spirit of a true parents' peace kingdom and how we're able to work with Muslims and Christians and Jews. We're able to go into any community. No matter what camp it is, we always find that God's people are there. Because of that, the direct descendant of King Kamehameha honored Father as the King of Peace by giving his royal cloak to true parents and also honoring them in a special Hawaiian way. It was, it was overwhelming. The spirit was so uplifting. I want to thank our district directors and your leaders throughout the 12 districts of America for responding it, it just as the regional directors of the past did. Without even any question, immediately they came to Hawaii. And that's what I see in our blessed families right now. Damon M. recently in her speech in Champion praised America because America really responded to Damon M.'s tour that was directed by our true parents to bring grace and a new beginning for all blessed families. This new beginning has made us different people. Actually, all second generation, no matter what past mistakes 
If they went through the grace ceremony properly, they're restored to the position of a pure second generation with no mistake. That means they can make a totally new start in their lives and they can be blessed second generation to second generation with no blemish. This also cleansed and, and purified all of our blessed families so we can stand with the support of our ancestors and the support of the saints of heaven from all faith traditions to really march forward. That's why I'm telling all of our blessed families right now, be bold and strong. We were amazed as we came back from Hawaii. Right away we saw the American Clergy Leadership Conference convention. We went to Texas, to Houston. We're welcomed there by Reverend Hernandez and all of the leaders and, and families of Texas. We want to thank the Texas District because they did an outstanding job. Also, Reverend uh, Bennett Hayes and Reverend Ethel Hayes, his wife, of Gloryland Baptist Church, along with Reverend Keyes and his wife, welcomed our ACLC delegation. Also, Native Americans played a key role in this conference, as did Hispanic pastors. Father always told us that we have to make a foundation in every state with the Christian clergy. And then first black clergy will come, and then he said Spanish clergy will come. And then he said eventually white clergy will come to understand true parents' role as being anointed by Jesus. One thing I want to testify about, and I saw in that ACLC conference led by Reverend Doherty and our people, that's an amazing change occurring in the pastors. Four ministers gave Divine Principle lectures. They own the lectures because they believe in the principle and they see the exposition of the principle unfolding the principles that have been hidden in the Bible. The Bible is the base of truth, but also the Bible has hidden within it many prophecies and secrets that need to be unfolded. That's what the divine principle does. It pulls the prophecies and the hidden secrets of the Bible together so that we can see what Jesus' teaching was ultimately leading to in the second coming. And what the teaching is leading to is one thing, that all families have to go to the Garden of Eden, return to the Garden of Eden, or return to the Peace Kingdom, become a true son to God, become a true daughter to God, become a true blessed couple and have children and make a true family. Then extend that true family for three generations. That's what true parents are now teaching us. Then God can dwell in our family forever. That's the meaning of our Jew. When we end our prayers now, not only in Amen, in public, but also we're now ending our prayers with Aju. Aju is a, a special creation. Uh, uh, it's not really a Korean term, but it's a, a special uh, newly formed uh, uh, term that, that means my family is the dwelling place of God. I claim that. We are a blessed family. Our lineage is God's lineage. My heart is the dwelling of the kingdom of heaven, and that's where God dwells in my heart. God dwells with, in my family as a family of true love. That's why the, the main focus of the principle is to bring about the true family. That's why ACLC was un, really amazing when I saw these pastors teaching these principles with their Bibles in hand. And then we went to Glory Land Baptist Church for the final fellowship and prayer breakfast. Amazing. First of all, the 120 clergy, many of them came to this ACLC conference, the 120 clergy that traveled throughout the 120 nations of the world. I can't tell you the difference between one year ago and today in terms of what happened to those clergy after they went throughout the world and gave the peace messages. It has changed everything. These clergy are on fire. And also the ambassadors for peace from many faith traditions that gave the peace message, they also are standing side by side with the clergy, totally believing that God has chosen true parents 